Are tanks becoming obsolete? This question has been asked a lot over the past two years, most notably for the apparent vulnerability of these million plus dollar machines to cheap drones equipped with explosives during the Russia-Ukraine war. However, this question is nothing new and has been asked over the past few decades with the propagation of anti-tank guided missiles or ATGMs such as the Cornet and the Javelin. But there are ways to counter these new technologies. For example, there are soft kill strategies such as jamming the signal that the drone or missile receives from its operator. This is again nothing new. In fact, the reason that the tow missile uses a wire is because if it used radio signals to be manually guided to the target, these could be jammed. And in order for the guide wire to not get burned off by the exhaust, the rocket nozzles have to be offset to the side, decreasing both the speed and range of the missile. So, electronic countermeasures were a major concern even back in the 1980s. Jammers can be placed on nearby vehicles or on the tank itself. The fact that off-the-shelf drones have been wreaking as much havoc as they have in the Russia-Ukraine war, along with the fact that people with civilian radios could eavesdrop on conversations, has indicated that both sides hadn't implemented sufficient electron warfare systems. Overall, I think the best parallel for the Russia-Ukraine war in recent history is the Iran-Iraq war which itself seemed like a throwback to the First World War, with kilometers of trenches and artillery barrages. In my opinion, if the deciding factor in a war is how much artillery you can lob at the enemy trenches, you've done something very wrong and the only reason you haven't lost is because your opponent also messed up. Indeed, three years after the Iran-Iraq War ended, we saw how disastrous such tactics would prove when used against a modernized military, i.e., when you try to use trench warfare, you're literally digging your own grave. It's for this reason that I don't think the Russia-Ukraine war is a good indicator of how two armies would fight a war when their rank and file isn't gonked up with corruption and nepotism. Apart from soft-kill anti-drone measures, there are hard-kill ones available as well. Most notably, there are Active Protection Systems, or APS. This is a bit of an oversimplification but it's like an automated shotgun that shoots down incoming missiles and drones. Now, this can be countered by attacking the tank with a swarm of drones or missiles, so even if the APS can shoot down some of them, one or two will get through and hit the tank. There are still some other hard kill strategies available. One would be to put a light machine gun like the M249 on a medium sized fixed wing drone to shoot down the attack drones before they can get close to the tank. Another strategy would be to equip attack helicopters with lasers. For example, the chin-mounted chain gun on the Apache helicopter can be swapped out with a laser, and the missiles with batteries as a power source. The modified Apache could then be used to shoot down incoming drones. The one kind of anti-armor munition that jammers and APS will be pretty much useless against are kinetic penetrators. These are thin rods made of very dense metals encased within a jacket. The jacket catches all the propellant when the gun fires and is discarded upon exiting the barrel. Because the rod is so dense, all the kinetic energy is concentrated to a small point, allowing it to cut through steel armor. These rounds are usually made of tungsten or depleted uranium, the latter of which is extremely effective because the way it shears upon impact makes it self-sharpening and it's pyrophoric, increasing the likelihood that the tank's ammunition will be ignited and detonate. There are three reasons that APS are rather ineffective against kinetic penetrators. First, they'll usually be traveling at supersonic speeds, while ATGMs and drones will be subsonic, so there will be less time to react to them. Second, the cross-section of a kinetic penetrator will be smaller than that of an ATGM or drone, making them even harder to hit. Lastly, since it's a solid hunk of metal, even if it does get hit, the penetrator will be more resistant to deformation than the shape charges used by other anti-tank munitions. So, as APS become more abundant, we'll become increasingly reliant on kinetic penetrators. But here's the catch. The only platform that can kill a tank with a kinetic penetrator is going to be another tank. I mean, sure, theoretically an artillery piece could, but their fire control systems aren't designed to hit moving targets. In summary, I can't know what the future will bring, 
but the propagation of APS has the potential to make tanks even more important than they are now. Well, that's my take on the issue, and if you have anything to add or an opposing view, I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks.